What do you, what do you think of the skills that people should start to develop in their twenties in general to make them better human beings, more potentially uh, open to success financially, relationship, health wise? What are two or three things that everyone should focus on in their twenties? Well, it certainly doesn't hurt to be in physical good physical condition. So we can walk through it. Stop drinking too much. How do you know if you're drinking too much? Um, you regret what you do when you're drinking. It's, it's interfering with other important goals. It's, it's causing you financial distress. It's getting you in trouble with your friends or your family. It's getting you in trouble with the police. Okay, so stop abusing substances if you can, right? If you see that they're... Um, hurting you um, and alcohol is particularly pernicious in that regard so physical health are you in decent shape are you strong and coordinated and if you're not well you'd be better if you were <laughs> you'd feel better you'd be more effective you'd live longer you'd be less sick and you really see that mount up like if someone's been in shape once in their life they age way better. And it's also a really good way of maintaining your cognitive ability. Like, you know, you, you hear about those exercises that you can do online to make you smarter and keep your cognitive ability intact. Yep. Those don't work. There's no evidence that they work. People keep saying that they make you smarter, or they maintain your cognitive function. Psychologists have studied that for 50 years, hoping that one of those things will work, trying all sorts of creative tacks. They don't work. Exercise works. Cardiovascular and weightlifting. You start to decline in your fluid intelligence at about the age of 25. And it's a linear trend downhill and it can accelerate as you get older. It's just mm. like this, quite ugly. Mm. If you exercise, you stave that off. So that's really useful. Um, maintain your relationships and, and foster them. They're un so when I look at successful people, they're really good at something. They're reliable, right? You can count on their word. They're generous mm -hmm. and they have a wide, wide connection network, which becomes more and more valuable as you get older. Yeah. So it's one advantage that older people really have over younger people. They have a connection network and a connection network is huge. Well, you could be connected to a thousand well-connected people. Okay, that means you are connected to the entire world. <laughs> right, it's right. unbelievably valuable. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's so absolutely remarkable about the situation that I'm in right now as far as one of the great benefits is the I can access. Co yeah. I can contact pretty much anybody and they'll talk to me. It's yeah. like, "Really? Right. That's so right. cool. I'm 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 interested in infrastructure for reasons I won't get into, but I'm interested in infrastructure development." I think it's a good method of wealth transfer. Mm. It's a good solution to the problem of inequality and, and employment. Um, I reached out to a leading expert, a leading expert on infrastructure last week, to see if he'd talk to me. I thought, I don't know anything about infrastructure except that it's worn to a frazzle and we should do something about it. You know, he agreed to talk. And it, 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 having a connection network is of an inestimable, inestimable value. It's huge. Um, reliability, generosity, you can work on both of those. Philosophical sophistication, mm. it's very useful um, because it orients you properly. You have a, a sophisticated sense of, of the world. You find, for example, that um, doing things for other people is actually more rewarding than virtually anything else you can do. You know, when you hear you should be of service to other people. Well, if you actually watch yourself, you pay attention to yourself and you do something that helps someone else and it genuinely helps them. I defy you to find another experience that is that satisfying. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite stunning how satisfying that is. And so that's a very useful thing to realize. Why is um, helping another person the most satisfying thing for probably most people when they're 
if they're, you know, out of their ego of like, I want to buy more things to make me happy in this moment. Why is that such a satisfying thing for human beings? Uh, there's no better strategy for, there's no better life strategy. I mean, imagine, I could give you a, a quick sort of technical example. So imagine I take two people and I say, okay, um, I'm going to give you $100 and you have to give some of it to the person right beside you. And they can either agree or disagree with the split, but if they disagree, you don't get anything. Okay, so a classical economist would say that the person should take the hundred, offer the person next to them a dollar, and the person should accept it because why not? They get a dollar instead of nothing. And that's the solution. But what happens is that if you don't offer that other person something close to 50-50, they're they likely to tell you. you to go to hell. Yes, yeah. very. And then, and and then you, you think, get well, nothing. You get nothing too. You think, well, why would people do that? Because they just reject $50 and who cares? And the answer is, well, we don't just play one game with other people. We play a repeating game. And so, so imagine we did this. So imagine it's a crowd and they're all watching you. And I offer you $100 and you have to share it with the person next to you. And you say, would you like to take $70? And the person says, well, I'm not sure that's fair to you, but if it's okay, yes. But then everyone else sees that. And now they all have an opportunity to pick who they're going to play with next. Well, you're not going to get picked, picked last, are you? Remember what you told me? You didn't want to get picked last, right? I did not. Okay, so what you did was you turned yourself into an athlete. A machine. Okay. That always get first. <laughs> okay, great. So, but imagine we expand that game. Yes. And we say, you want to be the person that everyone wants to play with. Yep. Well, then all you have in your whole life is invitations to play. Well, how, how, and how are you going to be that person? Be productive, straightforward, generous. Make everyone else better around you and they're going to want to play with you. A absolutely. So there you go. And then you get to play. Yeah, exactly. Well, how is that not the best possible deal? It's yeah. clearly, see, so, so the reason, if, if the ethical argument is put properly, it is by far the most compelling argument. It's like if you want to have everything you could possibly want and more, then be a good person. Mm -hmm. The better a person you are, the more likely that is to happen. That doesn't mean you that you're completely protected against getting cut off at the knees. But there's no better strategy. That's it. And you can even think about it selfishly. And I talk about this to some degree in Beyond Order. Let's say you let's say that I you want to be selfish. You think that's the best possible strategy. Mm -hmm. Why should I care about others? Okay, let's say you should only act in your own best interest. Well, then it's like, well, what's your best interest? Well, what does interest mean and what does you mean? Mm -hmm. What's in your best interest? Your best interest. Three mysteries. What's your, what's best, what's interest? Okay. Well, there's you, but you aren't just you right now. You're you and you tomorrow and you next week and you next month and you in five years and you in 10 years and you when you're a pensioner. You're a community of selves mm. stretched across time. And so if you were enlightened and selfish, you would act in a manner that would benefit that entire community across time. And I don't think that's any different than acting on the best possible part for other people. I, I think they're the same problem. Yeah. So I think as soon as human beings discovered the future, we, we, no, we were no longer singular individuals. We're instantly each a community. And then the community ethic prevails. And the community ethic is, I want to win in a way that makes you win. Jocko was telling me when we talked this week. He's this tough character, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and he could have. And I'm not telling tales out of school here. He could have been a criminal, no problem. <laughs> and he knows that perfectly yeah. well. And He's I'm not saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that. As a slur on his character. 
partly because I believe the Nietzschean dictum that a lot of morality is just cowardice. And whatever he might be, he's not a coward. And so, and just because you obey the laws doesn't mean you're moral. It just might mean you're afraid. In any case, so the question is, well, what socialized this brute? Well, he was taught in the Navy SEALs. Yeah. Take care of your team. That's your fundamental purpose. Mm. And he noted, and we had a long discussion about this, the successful guys, man, they've, you know they've got your back. Wow. Right? They, you they know that above them, yeah. all. Yeah, and, if, and if, if, if you aspire to a leadership position among those brutes, let's say, and you aren't someone they know to have your back, they're not following. You're not going to make it. Yeah. Uh-uh. You're not going to make it. And so that's, this is why the discussions of power that are so prevalent in, in modern culture bother me yeah. so much. It's like, you think male hierarchies are predicated on power? You really think that? They are when they've gone rotten. But when they're not rotten, that's not what they're predicated on at all. The capacity to exercise power, that's really important. You need that. It has to be part of you for you to be admirable. It's like you could be a badass son of a bitch. Yes, I see that. And, and that way I'm somewhat intimidated by you. And that's actually a testament to your moral virtue, that you have enough force and power to be intimidating. But then if you can encapsulate that and take that potential for power and harness it to this broader good, well, that's unstoppable.